couple of years, I had, I always was late. And um, when I talked to a gynecologist, she told me that this is a problem with my hormones. Welcome to another episode of my podcast that's fine with me. Today, we're going to be talking about toxic relationship and especially in-laws. I can tell you for sure, I'm not in really good relationship with my in-laws. Mainly, I can't say in really bad relationship, but I try not to contact with them. Not with every single person from my husband's family, from my husband's side, let's say. I I really like his mom. So she's like my mother-in-law. And um, I guess I'm not in a bad relationship with his dad. So I'm like, yeah, hi, and whatever. We have nothing in common, let's say. We don't really have much in common to talk about certain things. But I want to tell you guys that with other relatives, with some certain people, I'm not really good um in terms of like talking and especially i guess his dad um and he's like grandpa they're cool i mean like i really like his grandpa because he has like no problems whatsoever if anyone tells something or something he's just like either ignores this person if he tells some weird shit or you're like that's fine just like do whatever you want and he's quiet most of the time is just like live in the room if he doesn't feel comfortable or he's done with his meal and he just goes and watches some TV shows and whatsoever. And mainly, I guess his uh, dad's brother, he's really cool as well. I really love his wife. She's super like calm. She doesn't really talk a lot. She's that kind of person that you don't really want to, uh, you know, you really want to interact. But if you don't, that's fine. She's just the quietest person I know from their family. By the way, I don't really come to my husband's family a lot like with a visit i mean we had some certain issues and problems throughout this 13 years not 13 i guess 12 years because it's gonna be like 13 this um july me and my husband sort of dating uh but i guess maybe only 12 years ago i came to visit his dad and his wife um that's not my husband's mother that's just some new sort of not really new but his new wife I'm not in good relationship with this woman and I'm not really good with his grandma. I have my personal reasons and I don't really want to talk some shit about these people on camera because I feel everything they do to me, um, like saying nasty things from time to time, um, I don't really want to talk about this because it feels a little bit wrong. I feel this is okay for them, but I don't really want to be the same person and I don't really want to treat people the same way. So it's just like I have my own reasons why I hate talking to them. I hate visiting them. Um, but I really love his mom because she, even when they have some sort of scandals or fights, I mean, my husband and his mom, because she's super emotional, um, then she would never involve me in this kind of stuff. So she would never involve me into this fight. She would never tell him that I'm that in this. So mainly they can deal with their own problems without involving me. And I'm super grateful for that. I feel super comfortable going there. And you know, this is about... Um, um, this is a, the ultimate, I guess, test to see how people, when you around them, you know that if you feel comfortable, then it's definitely not toxic. So it's just, it's really cool. You can talk about everything and anything. But when you are surrounded with some certain group of people, we don't really feel comfortable. That is the first sign that you should probably leave and to not talk to these people anymore. I actually don't really have a lot of this friends, I guess, because I feel like my friends they try to respect me back most of them and one of my oldest friends she kind of used a couple of times some weird things and like not used them but she told me a couple of things like um i guess i should have been born in your family so she told me that my parents should have been her parents and i should have been born in her family because her family are super strict and maybe i need a little bit of this um and i was like so you think that my parents, they did too much to me and your parents did nothing. So you just really want to get my parents. But it's so funny because when I told my mom about that, she said, like, if I had a daughter like her, I would have probably been as strict as her parents. So it's just mainly like you all have different kind of perspective of things. You think that my parents are the best and I really love my parents and they are the best. But of course, we had some ups and downs. And, you know, um, I guess my mom and I, we're kind of vibing. We're like sort of friends. But I can't say that we crossed the line where I can tell my mom some sort of like sexual experience. We never crossed this line. We never crossed this border. I don't really want to talk about sex life with my mom. I don't really want to talk about her sex life. Um, It's just, it's a taboo. And I don't really want to talk about this. So I guess we have some limits and we don't really like 
、mm, we know where our boundaries are. I can talk to her about some things that happened to me, some friends that were saying weird things, like my friend telling me that she should have been born in my family. It's ridiculously crazy.、Um, another really. Story interesting. My friend once told me that I don't know. Maybe is it some sort of jealousy? I don't know, but it was rude. And actually, that was a period of time, sort of relationship where we were like really good friends for a long period of time. And then something happened. Something cracked. I went to university. She went to university, but she went to this bougie university. She had a loan, another loan. She went into this debt. Um, lots of debts, and I told her that she could probably transfer to some less bougie university so she could afford this. But she tell she told me like, no, the the university that you're attending is a shitty university. I need a a normal one. And this kind of phrase was weird when she told me that I was attending shitty university. And I told her like, oh, thank you so much. And she was like, no, 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 I'm talking about my faculty. The faculty that I want to attend is shitty. Not completely like the whole university is shitty. It's just like my faculty that I really wanted to attend. And some other phrases like, um, I had some. Something where、um, we were probably like maybe eighteen or nineteen, and we were talking, and I told her that、um, my period was late. I was late, basically.、Um, I was late, and I thought I might be pregnant, but back then I, I, I hadn't graduated university or college, so I had no right to, you know, have like to give birth because I would、uh, have unfinished. Education, so it was really tough back then because I was basically a teenager, sort of teenager. Maybe I was seventeen. I don't remember. No, I guess not. No, 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 no. I was eighteen or nineteen, I guess back then. And I talked to my friend, and I said that I was considering abortion if I was pregnant. So I was. That was like I had this thought. I can't say that I would have done that, but I had this thought. And I shared this with my friend, and I thought she was like a real friend, and、uh, she told me that before. Going down, or before fucking, she told me something like this: Maybe you should turn on your head, or your brain, something like this. So I was like, "Uh, well, hello, I'm sorry. Yeah, maybe this is my problem that I wasn't thinking. But I was like, every single time we did use some condoms, that's why. Um, I, I was late because back then, um, I lost my virginity when I was seventeen, and um. Through this whole period of time, a couple of years, I had I always was late, and、um, when I talked to a gynecologist, she told me that this is a problem with my hormones. So I kind of started having sex, and、uh, my body was adjusting and adapting to this fact. So I was inconsistent, and they actually prescribed some hormones, but all of these hormones they weren't really good for me. So when I was taking them, I remember I literally dozed off once, um, because I had everything was black in my eyes, and these hormones they weren't really good for me. So I stopped taking them, and in a couple of years, I guess it just it、uh, came to a really good state. Right now, I actually can predict my period to date, um, because I know that. The the products I eat, some food that I take,、um, I know,、uh, I know that I do some Pilates workout, so I'm consistent with like with certain style, healthy style. I don't really have diets, real like diets, but I eat nice food, vegetables and fruits, and a lot of these things. So I I can tell you that it has become much better. In a couple of years, it has become much, much better. In a couple of years, that's why I, 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 I thought every single time I thought I was pregnant, but I wasn't. Mainly, that was my hormones that were adapting to my system, and they were adapting to the fact that I'm kind of like changing this whole thing. My body is changing. Was changing, um. So yeah, and、um, my friend, she could use these words, and I guess for a couple of years we just stopped talking. We talked only once a year. When like twice a year, when she had her birthday and I had my birthday, and I had a little bit different friends because I went to my university later, and then I found some new friends and some new groupmates. We had the best time ever. She had her groupmates, and it is so funny because my groupmates were like just normal people. I had the best time with these people. These are like I I love my group that I went to when I went to university. As a translator, I really, really love my group. But as my college years, I had another group. Uh, well, 
we had a lot of bitches there. So sorry for saying this, but this was true. There was a lot of bullying involved and um, that was crazy. I mean, I survived this year's and every single time they asked me to come to this, you know, anniversary uh, day that we graduated like years ago, this year is going to be 10 years when I graduated my college. And I'm like, no, no. I remember, I st like, the memory is still fresh what you did to me. This bitch has been literally treated a lot of girls nasty and, um, and dirty, I guess. And even friends, I guess. They considered each other as friends, but they weren't friends at all. They talked shit behind their backs. And it was weird because they could do this in front of me. I wasn't their friend. Um, but I remember one girl, she was like bestie with another girl. And once this girl left, she was saying some nasty things about this, like the girl that left the room. So it was, you know, disgusting. But as my university years, when I went as translator and I had like five year, um, sort of year, five years, I've, 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 I'd been studying for five years. We had really, really good people in my next group, I'd say. In my group, I really love these people. Of course, we did have some, I mean, like conversations, tough conversations from time to time, but it's just nothing. Mainly, we were really friendly. We were hanging out. We were talking. That was cool. And um, I have a lot of friends. I guess my friend, one of my really good friends, she's Aries, by the way. And I, um, she's my school friend. And we're still hanging out from time to time. Of course, she works. I do my own thing. And uh, when we see each other, we have the best time together. And I appreciate her. And she's the 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 most like she's the honest person and i really like this about her another friend i'm gonna meet her this thursday we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna go to a theater and yeah she's a good re really good friend of mine she was from college by the way from this nasty group the only like normal person not the only a couple of people were kind of cool but not all of them and uh, one more guy from my university um now he lives in uh, israel so yeah we're still kind of um good friends and my childhood friend so a lot of these things were said um as my childhood friend and when she when she talked to me about certain things like like my parents that should have been born in my family and something like this it actually happened through this phase where she went to this university she never told me anything like this when we were like um at school or just like hanging out and talking she wasn't from school she was from my countryside let's say home we were neighbors and um and she had this i i guess she had this thing when she went to this bougie university a lot of the, her group mates they were from rich families maybe not crazy rich but from rich families and these families could afford a lot of things and designers like they were wearing designer bags shoes you know all this stuff and all they cared about was basically stuff so they didn't really care about people and my friend she wanted desperately she wanted to be one of them her family is not really rich her family they're not poor they're not rich there's some sort of like a little bit lower than the middle class if you want to i mean just like they could afford a lot of things, but I guess that is just my personal opinion. They they can afford a lot of things, but they, they do not know how to spend money. I mean, my quick example, my friend, she spends a lot of money, like she could spend a hundred bucks per like through this week where um all of the all of the things that you should pay as a grown up, like mortgages or some electricity bills, water and all of this. She doesn't really care about this because her boyfriend pays for that. The products, even products, he buys products, food. And um, she is the person who can spend easily 100 or 150 bucks for absolutely nothing. Just some random things like sushi or just um, beer or something like this just to treat herself. And every single time she tells me that she has no money, she literally earns the same amount as probably like my father. But my mom and my dad. They can support a family of four people and she can support herself with the same salary just because she doesn't know how to invest money. And the whole thing about her family is the same. So her parents, they don't really care about saving money. They care about some momentum like decisions. If they need to purchase some food, they would need to go to a restaurant and, 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 and grab a takeout. So you know how much money you spend on a takeout. It's just enormous. And that is the main reason behind spendings that a lot of people say, oh, you are 
good because you have that much salary, but this person might have the same salary as you do. But this person tries to save some money and cook at home. He cooks at home, or she cooks at home. And a lot of the stuff is important to understand that you just know how to spend. And、uh, people they don't know how to spend, they think that everyone else has money, and they try to say that they're the poorest people in the world, but they they're not. I mean, there are literally people that poor. And there are people that make themselves poor just because they do not know how to spend money. There is the difference. So my friend is the category of people that do not know how to spend money, and、um, I know that she told me a couple of times that she was hanging out with his friends from her university group, and all of their talks were about boys, about like spending money, how much they do earn. And one of these girls from her university, she got married, and her guy, he does, he makes kind of a lot of money,、um, but they kind of spend this on restaurants, some tennis, a、uh, big tennis with a coach. And you know all of this stuff. So there, she wants a Tiffany ring and all of this. So most of this money just goes to some random things like stuff. And、um, when one of these girls that she was a friend of、uh, said that her husband was making money by like driving or something like this, his his dad used to have a company with luxury cars. So if he needed a taxi, the luxury taxi, he could、uh, provide the service. But when COVID started, they had a huge problem, and his dad and this guy they were left alone, and they had to be drivers themselves. And、um, they were they were already married. This group made with this guy and another group made that has kind of like rich parents, and the, her husband is making quite a lot of money. She was like, oh, this poor. He he can't even compare to my husband. So it was more like, who is making more money? And my friend was involved in that, and from there started some weird talks about me and my parents, my shitty university. All of that, I guess, was in like an influence. And as my mom talked to her mom, her mom said that she was accusing her parents that they weren't rich and they couldn't afford. Um, like paying for her university, they had huge fights. That was the main reason why she had this weird kind of problem, character problem with her parents, with me, and everyone were like a little bit back from her. And right now, it is so funny to say, but years later, she stopped talking to these girls because she graduated from university, and the only person she still talked to was this girl with kind of like not rich but very. No, let's say call. Let's call him a rich, rich husband. And、um, every single time my friend had anything to like, share, something exciting that she found a guy who was giving her presents and who was really nice to her, she just stopped talking to my friend. Just because all these years, my friend was someone that she could be, she could brag about her life. She could be like, "Look at me! I have the best time in my life, and you're poor." Look at me! I am the best person. You're poor, and she couldn't, you know, identify the tox- the toxic relationship she was into with her friends from this university. I would never talk to people and say like, "Oh, you know what? I have a rich husband, and he pays for me, and this and that." I wouldn't do this just because I don't really need this. Second of all, I don't really want people. You know, when you say such things, people start. Thinking about your salary, about your husband's salary, how much money you make, and they try to meddle into your business and meddle into your finances, and that's something. This this is list that I want to have. Like people wondering around how much money we make. This is the main reason why I would never probably talk about my finances because it's none of someone's business except for my husband and me. That is the main reason. My friend always she's always asking how much money my husband makes, and she used to ask me how much money I was making, and it always pissed me off because I don't really want to share this information. And every single time I was like, "Oh, it's not that much," and I was like literally trying to direct this. Um, talk into a little bit different area, like you know, let's just discuss something else. Because I don't like, and、uh, every single time she was like, "I'm not gonna say this to anyone. It's just for my information, something like this." But I know she's gonna, she's gonna tell this to every single person she knows. Because I know every single time her friend, this friend with let's say rich boyfriend and husband, um, tells how much he makes, I know how much he makes, and I don't really know this guy. 
And it's not because I'm wondering. It's because whenever we talk, she is the first person to tell me, oh, do you know how much he makes? He makes that much money. And I'm like, okay, do I really care? Do I really care how much money he makes? I don't really care. Because you can make, um, I don't know, a thousand thousand dollars and you live in an expensive like sort of area and i don't really waste a lot of this money most of it you just spend and you cook at home and you do a lot of things by yourself like diy projects let's say and some of the guys can make ten thousand or maybe twenty thousand grands per month and they would still be like oh i don't really make much money because i'm like it depends on district it depends on food preferences depends on uh like what are the like, for example, you go to some, to some thrifting stores or you go to some expensive luxury stores like Louis Vuitton or something like this or Chanel and um, more of this. And I'm going to tell you guys, my personal thing is that toxic relationship is not always about people making you feel uncomfortable saying that like you're a piece of shit. No, sometimes it's all about some weird comments like, hmm. I should have been in your family. I should have been you. That is the weirdest comment I've ever gotten. Or maybe like comments, oh, um, she makes more money than you do. I can afford this. You can't afford this. Oh, my husband gave me, I don't know, like 200 bucks for this as a present and yours didn't. Something like this. I mean, it's not always has to be some rude comments, rude sentences and words. It might be some weird comments that are like not as straightforward as you think but you still feel uncomfortable that is the main reason why i do not visit my husband's relatives like his dad's side because his dad is fine his brother is fine um cousins and you know just um his grandpa but with some certain people i'm not really good his like wife we had some issues that a lot of things like happen we try to talk them out but it didn't work that is the main reason why i just don't really come and a lot of people they are judging me for not coming some sort of like family celebrations but i think it's my personal business when i feel uncomfortable i don't really want to go there i don't really want to get into some weird fights with different people that is the main reason why i would probably steer clear from these families or from these relatives and i just want to mind my own business and if you respect me you're going to be welcome in my family and i will always respect you you in return but i can tell you for sure that if you disrespect me and my family members then uh, you're going to be banned from my family of course i can be i can tell truth from time to time it might be a little bit harsh but not in a way that i'm going to be rude i'm like i will try always find uh, an easy way to tell this for example my cousin asked me once like oh you gained some weight and well, i was like yeah i did so would i tell this to my cousin probably not i wouldn't do that but will i tell this to my mom yeah i will i will say like mom i guess you should probably do some exercises because it's gonna just lift you up a little bit and uh we're gonna have like normal conversation nothing crazy like oh you are a piece of shit or something like this as others can do so that is pretty much it guys i hope that this conversation was more or less um helpful for some of you guys because i feel like we neglect the fact that a lot of people might be rude towards us it might be a little bit you know a lot of comments i get a lot of comments really positive and great comments on my youtube channel bra but from time to time i get some comments where people say like oh your lip color is the worst this makeup is hideous or like you're ugly i did get a lot of these comments and what i try to say is that that is your opinion or like okay or like mm, it's meant to be this way or something like this i don't really want to get into this weird fights with someone random from youtube but um like from my comment section but if there's someone who's just literally talking to me directly i might get into some small fight with this person if he's disrespectful and he doesn't mm, care about my feelings so i guess you should clear this straight because i i still have Mm, regrets i guess i have regrets that i didn't say something years ago when i talked to some certain people i was patiently silent and and it piled up and it was growing and growing and growing and right now i feel super emotional towards these people and i know it's going to be a real fight so instead of saying something years ago and saying that like just stop let's just forget about this but you would never ever 
do this again to me. That's one thing. But I just kind of let it slide. And right now, that's a huge pile of issues that I really want to address that I should have done like years earlier, years ago, years ago. So yeah, guys, do not make my mistakes. Try to avoid this type of conversations when you're super angry and start clearing out things when it's not too late, when it's early stage of things. Okay, guys, I love you all so much. Don't forget that I have a description box, my mail. You can ask me anything. It's going to be 100% anonymous. We can discuss this in my podcast. That's fine with me. I love you all. And I'm going to see you next time, hopefully. Bye-bye.